Hello and welcome to this week's Racing Bet Preview, coming to you live for the first time ever. So please bear with us that if anything goes wrong, we're on day one duty. So please uh, bear with us. We're doing counter a few errors. I'm your host, Tim Gears, joined by Trent Crevin. This week's episode is brought to you by betdeluxe.com.au. Serious betting for serious punters. We uh, thank them for supporting the show as they do continually. Trent, welcome to the show. Big weekend ahead. We're halfway through the card at Mooney Valley tonight. Of course, Moya Stakes night. Group 1 racing tonight. Group 1 racing in both states tomorrow with the Golden Rose and the Underwood. Plenty to look forward to. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's great. You know, the Valley started early tonight. We still got the Moya to come. The Underwood looks a bit of a one-act affair, potentially. Um, potentially the Golden Rose could be as well. We'll get to that a little bit later, but it's a huge weekend of racing. AFL Grand Final Saturday night. Yeah, it's, um, it's a big one. And how is uh, the Valley going so far? I must admit I've been tied up trying to sort out rides for Sheridan McGrady at Kalgoorlie next week. So uh, I haven't really been keeping an eye on things. How are we going? Uh, yeah, we've had a big winner with Lombardo in race two as the on top of there. Um, won by about four or five lengths there. Um, no winners since. We've got a couple of nice bets coming up. We've got, um, yeah, best best value still to come in the next and then the Moya as well. So probably just behind the eight ball, but there are a couple of races to make it up. I'm confident we will. What is our best value bet coming up in the next for those tuning in live? Uh, so it's the JRA Cup race six, number five, Al Galail on an each way basis. Um, just think he goes really well at the track and distance. He won this race last year, set to peak third up, gets a nice map for the Mara and Eustace team. I think he'll run a nice race. Um, yeah, at the each way price. Okay, let's hope that gets home while we're on air. Probably that's set to come up in 18 minutes, if I am correct. We'll take it through our thoughts on tonight's Moya Stakes. We'll have a look at the market, courtesy of Bet Deluxe. And then we'll take you through our best bets for both Sandown. Underwood Stakes that Sandown for the first time. And also Rose Hill, of course, headlined by the Golden Rose. We'll take you through our best bets there, best value bets. We'll look at both group ones. And that should round us out for this week's episode. Um, Trent, Underwood Stakes Day at Sandown. Normally at Flemington. Uh, what are you expecting the track to do tomorrow? Normally at Caulfield. Uh, the, the yeah, Caulfield, sorry. What did I say? Flemington. Yeah. Flemington, yeah. Um, look, I think the track should be fine. Sandon Hillside normally plays quite fairly. Rail is true. Um, good four at the moment. So most horses normally get their chance there. It's a nice big track. So expecting it to play fairly. All right. Let's waste no more time. We'll get through our best bets for tomorrow. And we'll take a look at tonight's Moya Stakes. We'll kick off with you in Melbourne. Sandown, as I've just mentioned, your best bet comes up in race number three. You're with horse number three, Len is legend. I do believe this was the last start winner for us, and I'll try and play the replay over the top as you speak. It was, yeah. So um, I think I had it best of the best of the day Fortunate kiss. Uh, last and start then came down the outside this ancient girl. track. Went to the front there, um, controlled the race, just went, you know, went too easily out in front, got an easy time, kicked away. Some, some strong sectionals there. I think a bit of a fairly handy horse there in Fortunate Kiss as well. Steps up in trip here. I think that's really going to suit. Gets a lovely map again here from a nice draw. I think he's going to win this. He'll, he'll put himself into a Caulfield Guineas kind of into the field and be some sort of outside chance there. I think this is um, a really easy race for him and he should be winning. Beautiful race three, number three, Lenders Legend, $2.40 at betdeluxe.com.au. My best bet of the day at Rose Hill is going to come up in race number seven. This girl did the job for us last start, and I'm sticking with her to do the job for us again. This is the Kiwi Mare and Trivier. This is her winning a couple of weeks back. Um, she was some sort of query heading into that first up off a setback, uh, but she was just too good for him. You can see her sailing down the outside here with Jane Mack in the saddle. Uh, that took her winning record to six wins and two second placings from eight starts. She does draw awkwardly again here in barrier 12. That's the only little query. Uh, but look, I think she's just the class mare in the race. Happy to stick with her. We're getting $2.25 at bedforlaxstock.com.au. I think that's a good enough price. And uh, happy to make her my best bet of the day once again. That was her winning the group two Shiraco Stakes. Up to 1,400 metres here in the Golden Pendant. Yeah, I think she'll do the job once again. Trent, any thoughts on Entrivier? Yeah, it was a really nice win, wasn't it? Um, Been Everest talks with her. She gets a, a decent ride. I think she's going to be hard to beat. Cool. Moving on to something at a little bit better odds for the punters at home. Your best value bet of the day at Sandown comes in, comes up in race number eight. You're with horse number two, Newhart. Currently $10 to bet deluxe. 
Yeah, so race eight, this is the test of Ross Estates. I'm with the Tasmanian horse here, Newhart. I thought this is his kind of his last uh, one of his last starts here. We put about four lengths or so on Mystic Journey there, running into second two. Probably wasn't at her best. It definitely wasn't at her best that day. But I think he's a pretty handy horse, and I think he can measure up at, in Melbourne. He's got a good first up record, two wins from three starts. He's got form around the likes of, like I said, their Mystic Journey. Also got a win over Mandela Effect, who we've come over and, and seen run really well here in group and listed races in Melbourne. So I think he's certainly got the talent here. Gets a really nice map from Barrier 4 with Froggy Newitt on board, the Tasmanian jockey. I think there's just queries on a few of these runners and where they're at, and I think he's just a, a really consistent horse. And he's he's going to run really well here. So each way basis, ten dollars. I think Newhart's going to run a really nice race. All right, race eight, number two for Trent Newhart, double figure odds there at Sandown. My best value bet of the day isn't quite at double figure odds at Rose Hill, but I just thought this is an each way bet to nothing. This is race four, number two on Taunt for Gay Bot and Tim Clark in the saddle. This is the Group D, uh, Group Three Con Stephen Quality we're talking about. Twenty four hundred meters. Um, this horse is just primed to go third up from a spell. This is his replay last start, running third in the Kingston Town Stakes, Group 3 level behind She's Ideal. Montefilia was back in second on that occasion. You saw him leading here. He was just run down late by those two. But the key is third up today. He's had three starts, third up for three victories. Uh, third up last preparation. He bolted in to win the Albury Cup. He pre proved way too good. Um, I just think he's ready now. The firm track's not going to harm him at all. And he uh, should be going to the front here. Barrier 5, as I said, Tim Clark on board and I think he's going to take plenty of catching. You do have the likes of No Compromise currently favourite down with 53 kilos for K-Mac and Waller but yeah I just thought on an each way basis with six bucks and more than even money the place available for on time. He was a really good each way bet there at Rose Hill on the weekend. I can't see him missing the first three and as I said he's three from three went third up so ready to peak up to 2400 metres back onto a good deck finds the front and uh, takes plenty of beating I think. Race four number two. All right, the feature tonight at Mooney Valley, as I've said, is coming up in how long, Trent? Must be yeah, 45 40 minutes, minutes or so. Yeah. yeah. This is the Group 1 Moyer Stakes we're talking about. Uh, Trent, why don't you take us through your thoughts on the race, and I'll share the market courtesy of betforlux.com.au over the top. Yeah, so um, as you expect, there's, there's decent speed. I think we've got the three-year-old down in the weights, Profiteer, 52 kilos. I think he's the fastest horse. I think he maps to find the front here. Ballistic Lover and Miss Albania will look to find their spots there as well. Wild Ruler and Shakiro next pair. Um, Portland Sky and Swats that, trying to slot in somewhere as well. And then the Inferno trekking September run in Brooklyn Hustle at the back. I'm with the three-year-old Profiteer here. He's been really well backed today. I think it was around $4 when I put out my run of the preview. $2.90 as we speak. Into $2.90, so we're in a good position there. Not surprised he's been well backed here as well. The three year olds have a really good record in this race. Um, a couple of years ago, we had Extreme Choice win for the same stable. And there's another one that escapes me. Um, she will reign as well in the last few years as one as a three year old. So this is generally a race where they go they go fast and the, the leaders can really just skip away from them. We saw last year with Pippi just led all the way. I think this is a similar kind of setup here with Profiteer. 52 kilos, if he can get to the rail first, and get just a, a, a bit of a breather mid-race. He's going to be very hard to run down. This was his um, run on debut down the straight. He, he made a pretty handy horse here in Ranveer. Looked second rate. Did it in really fast time. Went on to win his next start in Sydney over 1,100 by about five and a half. And then was only run down late by Animal at 1,200. So I think the 1,000 metres is really going to be to his liking tonight, even though he's never seen it. Um, I just think he's a 1,000 metre horse and he's going to be very hard to beat. Okay, and as we speak, two dollars seventy now. So there's a few I reckon tuning in that probably betting as we speak. Two dollars seventy favorite profit here go. tonight's Group One Moya Stakes at Mooney Valley. Yeah, fascinating race, isn't it? Um, and just kicks off what a great weekend we've got ahead. Speaking of great weekends and fascinating races, we move on to the Group One Golden Rose. Uh, this is race eight on the card at Rose Hill tomorrow. Pull up a market courtesy betlux.com.au. And all the rage, Trent is the Godolphin Colt Animo, currently $1.90 with Bet Deluxe. Uh, we then get to Artorias at $8.50 in the Congo, $9.00. Remark for Hugh Bowman and Team Hawks, currently $8.50. And the rest are out to double figure odds. Um, my race by race preview of this one is actually up as we speak on uh, racingbet.com.au. 
here it is. And you can get my thoughts on every single runner. You can get a speed map there, runner by runner analysis, my selections and my betting strategy. But I'll take you through my thoughts as we go now. Look, I find it very difficult to see Animo being beaten here. And I know I'm no genius for stating the obvious there, but um, if they were going to beat this horse, it was going to be first up in the run to the rose. They couldn't get it done. And he's the horse in the field with the most improvement. Um, like I said, he went into that first up, one trial, slight setback leading in, and he was just too big and too strong. I know the winning margin wasn't flattering, but I thought it was a really sound performance. And as I said, I expect him to really kind of bounce out of that run. And uh, if he does look out, he could be taking care of this lot. Um, I think, uh, you know, the even money is a bettable price. Uh, I've put three units on in my betting strategy. And uh, basically, there's no other runner I'm particularly interested in. I do expect Artorias to improve. Uh, curious to get your thoughts here, Trent, on Artorias. Of course, went down as a raging hot favourite last up. His first up uh, effort in Melbourne was super. As I said, a little bit flat, maybe second up, but this is a grand final stable. They'll have him absolutely cherry ripe, 100% spot on for third up, 1,400 metres. I expect him to uh, really turn up tomorrow. It does have an awkward draw, but yeah, if the real Artorias shows up, um, he'll be going close in this. The interesting runner is Remark. To me, I think it's D-Day for him. Uh, he gets an absolutely perfect draw, third up, 1,400 metres. Hugh Bowman sticks with him. Um, there's been a lot of hype about this horse, but he's been... A little bit underwhelming so far. You can make the case he was unlucky first up, but um, he was beaten on his merits, I thought, last start. It's really D-Day for him. But again, he is from a stable which really has their horses peaking third up for their grand finals. Um, but yeah, for me, the jury is kind of out on him. Um, and then you've got, I suppose, the fillies down the bottom. Jamae, she's the best of them. But I know we've spoken a little bit in... Uh, our, our group chat about the Phillies form being a little bit suspect. To me, I think the Colts and the Geldings are the ones to be with. I think it's their form is superior to the Phillies, so I'll be happy to be taking on Jamea. And a couple of longer odds, I'm suspecting um, or expecting Janus from the Waller camp to, to really show up here. I've always thought he was a decent horse. Um, tomorrow, or I should, I should say, first up, he kind of Proved that somewhat. He broke his maiden on that occasion in the Dolph Spice Stakes. He went into that on the back of a few good trials. So I think he's returned kind of the, the serious horse I thought he would mature into. And I wouldn't be surprised at double figure odds um, if he showed up tomorrow and really ran a, a very creditable race. So throwing him in, I think he's currently around $19. And the blowout of them all could be Halal, another horse that we're familiar with. Another one from the Hawks stable who has been hyped up to the moon and back and has so far somewhat failed to deliver. Um, but I do think $34 is a big price about him here. Look, he's going to get a long way back from barrier 13. Um, but look back to last prep. He ran super behind Animo in the size produce. He then started favourite in the champagne stakes. Of course, not much went right from there. Kind of hard to assess his two runs, this preparation. Um, but like I said, he's from a grand final style stable. They'll have an absolutely cherry ripe for this. And $34, I'll be throwing him in your numbers. So... Yeah, to summarise, I suppose, Animo, uh, very, very hard to beat. Clearly on top, I think he wins. I uh, can't see anything beating him, but a couple of throwing at big odds would be Halal and Janus. And, uh, yeah, expecting Notorious to show up as well. How did you see the Golden Rose? Fairly similarly, actually. Um, Animo clearly on top. I agree with everything you said there. If they were going to beat him, the Sydney Colts anyway, they were going to beat him first up. Um, just with any kind of luck from the barrier, I think he's probably, you know, he's going to win. Artorias, I've just got a query on, I think he's much better in a fast run race. We saw last start, they didn't really go that hard. He looked like he had them on the turn and he just couldn't quite sustain that sprint, that really short kind of turn of foot. We saw his best win in a blue diamond was off a really fast tempo. So just a bit of a query on how fast they go. I thought, um, I agree with you there, Halal, I thought was maybe the one that um, for a place at least $758 or so could run a race, got really keen last start in the Exford Plate, um, the same race Artorias comes out of. Blinkers come off, uh, visors go on, just to maybe negate that a little bit. And like like you said, his best was not far off Animo um, in that size produce. So Animo clearly on top. I think Halal was potentially the blowout, but yeah, I agree with everything you said there. All right, and as I said, you can head to racingbet.com.au and you can find my runner-by-runner -runner preview of tomorrow's Golden Rose. The group one at uh, Sandown is the Underwood Stakes. And what price are we into now with Zaki? Uh, what must it be, $1.25 or something, Trent? $1.28, I think, across the board. Um, yeah, look, it's he's, he's 
scared of his rival was a bit winks like to be honest you know there's not many that have show, showed up to try and race him here a field of five you can't really see anything beating him his first up win over 1400 meters was dominant he's down late um yeah he should just win probably was probably the obvious pick for second on the quick backup um superstorm maybe for third but he's not a betting price at, at a dollar 28 zaki happy to see him just go around in the small field and yeah, um, he'll probably shorten again for the Cox Plate if he wins as he is expected to. They've already paid out with him at one joint, I think. If I yeah, I did see that. Today. Yeah. yeah, that's a bit so, premature. We got a couple of internationals on the plane over. So, uh, yeah, he's not a moral for the Cox Plate, but he's, he's going to be he's, <laughs> he's pretty close, exactly. <laughs> he's a moral tomorrow. Speaking, I'm of, though. speaking of internationals, I suppose we should touch on quickly Spanish Mission not coming out for the Caulfield Cup, but thankfully my ticket at thirty-one dollars is alive for the Melbourne Cup still. Yeah, I think he's probably better suited over the thirty-two hundred anyway. Just you know, never ideal, but at least maybe you can't cop a penalty if he was to win the Caulfield Cup or something like that. So probably not too much harm done there. Um, yeah, still a leading chance. And Craig Williams booked a ride, if I'm correct. Yeah, exactly. And Craig Williams, um, very informed jockey, rode four winners on wins at, at Flemington on Wednesday. Yeah, very hot jockey at the moment heading into spring. Mm, I tell you, the other hot jockey at the moment is Sean McGrady over here in the West. I might be biased, but geez, he's right in the house down and he's on a number of good chances yep. again at Belmont tomorrow. All the eyes will be on the racing in the Eastern States, but we've got some cracking racing over here in uh, WA tomorrow to round out the Belmont winter season. Um, just that time of year, all the good horses are starting to make their reappearances. Can't wait to get stuck in before the AFL Grand Final at its uh, new home, Optus Stadium. <laughs> and it's all happening over there in Melbourne at the moment. I bet they're pretty well glad that the AFL Grand Final is in Perth and not Melbourne. You've got earth, earthquakes, yeah, it's, protests, it's been, riots, COVID. Yeah, it's it's all over the place here in Melbourne. Hopefully we can just focus on the racing and, yeah, we'll be out of this mess soon, get on track, and, um, yeah, that'll, that'll be nice, hopefully, towards the end of the spring. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you to those who did tune in live tonight. Uh, I think it would be better for the run, Trent. And uh, we'll look to continue doing this over the course of spring. Uh, we've got plenty of Group 1 race days coming up. Thanks to Bet Deluxe for their sponsoring of this week's episode. And uh, we'll be back to do it all again next week.